So everyone, can you guys introduce you introduce yourselves? And yeah, I don't have to say what you do, just your intro. Let's start. Decide. Edward Cameron Peverett. Sibu Siso Mabaso. Nelly Sua Mwase. Iman Mpande. Ndebu Tsesa. Sanbona Ningu Penwell Wagam Lojwa. And I'm here to defend good men. Kwaita Kaole. Musa Maswangai. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for coming. I'm going to ask everyone, when you think of GBV, what's your first thought? Sensationalism. Hmm. Uh, hate, okay. Um, violence, and it's owned by women. Owned? The term GBV. I'm saying the violence is owned by it's women. It's owned by women. It's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity to set a new societal norm and um, get a new contract in place that will, is for everyone. Because right now it's absolutely rubbish. It's a violent act. And a lot of the time it's, 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 it's towards women. Black. I won't say black, women. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen this and I was even having a discussion with, with my sister about it, is that white men angry <laughs> and we don't hear it a lot of the time because we live in a society that is majority black and we have we have put the face of abuse or violent acts on yes. black people mm. and black men mm. so now we have this thing that when we talk about black when we talk about uh, gender-based violence there's this autom automatic thought that goes towards black women and black men sure. when violence is towards the, the gender-based violence is against women, generally speaking, it's a violent act against women. But more than anything, what I've seen is that we have perpetuated the stereotypical thought that it's black women and it's black men. Mm. White men are super angry. I have seen it with my neighbor downstairs who was angry because I had the volume so loud in my apartment. He came and thought he could bang at my door and tell me in a really rude way to turn it down. For him to park in my spot and I ask him, please remove your car. And then he comes and becomes angry. This is within four minutes of moving into my new place and having a white man become angry at just a simple request. So white men are angry. I mean, even in the areas I've worked in, white young boys want to inflict their power on women. Sure. But because we live in a society that's majority black, we have seen this thing that, we have this thing that abuse is a black man's thing, it's a black woman's thing. A lot of women are being killed, especially even with white women, but we don't talk about it. If there's a case a few years ago, about two years ago, the guy who owns one of the, pro, one of the big property companies killed his wife on a wine farm, tried to make it look like it's a suicide. I mean, that was in the news for like five minutes. His sentencing was on the news for five minutes. Hmm. But then when it's a black woman who's inflicted of the pain, That's then tragic. it's a big thing. It's However, tragic. I understand that because black women, for a longest of time, we are literally at the bottom of the barrel. Even when it comes to feminism, we have all these things, feminist, feminist, but even black women, they can't even identify with feminism a lot of the time because they don't even know what feminist, feminism is to them. So the, the first thing that comes to mind when I think of gender-based violence is the fact that it's, it's incorrectly labeled, it's a misnomer, and it should actually be called violence against women, not even children, because children don't actually get a spotlight when it comes to GBV. So they need to change that. Um, I think names are very powerful. Xenophobia is a misnomer because there's no fear. Homophobia is a misnomer. Uh, so that needs to be changed. And secondly, um, I think it is very overhyped. Uh, when you look at the stats and you look at what's happening just in our homes, I believe there's an agenda specifically against black men to try and emasculate them, to try and what Iman was saying about normalizing. I think they're trying to remove the power of black men so that it's easier for the other races to dominate us. And you don't have black men defending you when white guys are parking in your space and telling you whatever, because I'll tell you to calm down or whatever the case may be, because my power's been taken away because I can't be a black guy that can stand for himself. That's me. Um, I think of violence towards women and children. That's all. Um, 
to, to, to add on to some of my colleagues, um, I feel it is ill, Ill defined, maybe well meaned, uh, but ill defined, um, especially the word based. And when you're trying to find a solution to something and you're going to use basis, and the base, what's basic there is incorrect, whatever sits on either side of that B within GPV, um, really, it's not going to take us anywhere. Um, uh, so, especially in terms of the, so there's, there's violence that happens. And I empathize, I sympathize with the violence, especially bad violence, especially destruct, uh, destructive violence, and especially the ones against women. Um, I, 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 I sometimes engage with people and say, um, what's your opinion on human-based violence? Um, and they look at me odd. And I'm like, but humans are killing humans. Um, I mean, in, in the thousands, if not the millions, each and every day, what's your opinion on human-based um, violence? Um, I'll show you the stats. They're shocking. The stats on human-based violence are shocking. Are you embarrassed to be a human? And that's where you see a lot of, um, as I say, chess pieces where the violence, a legitimate cause, because of the bases that we're using, we're using it really for, I don't know what we're using it for, but we actually, we're not going anywhere, anywhere close to the solution. And that hurts me because as a man who actually cares about senseless, against senseless violence, senseless, destructive, I mean, these people are, these people are filth, people you wouldn't even identify yourself with. People are forcing you to identify yourself with them. Sure. Even though you are not there, you're like, you and I, we align in beliefs, we are, we are aligning in everything else, but then you're forcing me to identify with filth. So that you can hoy at filth, because you don't have the access to hoy at the filth. But not only that, you're ingeniously also saying, you must be more powerful than the filth. Go handle the filth. But you called me filth. No, but you must go deal with the filth. And it's, it's this circus, and these letters, gender, gender-based violence as a triangle, all I see, every, every time I hear the word gender-based violence, I see this triangle going, and it's almost like you can even make it a circle. Because there's no solution that's going to come in there, especially, I believe, um, if we're going to use the basis, if our basis is wrong in terms of what the violence is. I, I don't know if I take issue with the basis. I don't know if I agree with your analysis of it. I think gender is a factor, and I think violence is present. So I think that there's nothing wrong with the term for me. Um, <clears throat> I don't think that men are violent towards women because they are women. They are women. That's gender necessarily. based. Right. There's a reason why we say gender based, right? And the reason why I think the term is fine, it's the same with farm murders. They are farm murders. There's nothing wrong with the term. There's an issue with how we interpret the actual thing it's describing, because that's the thing we're not talking about. You know, so, unless you're talking about your personal experiences, you know, which is why the conversation online is problematic, uh, because you're not actually talking about your experiences. You're not saying this is what happened. And you're not saying that this man gets triggered every time this happens, because that would be useful, knowing when this man gets tripped up. Not so that you can stop behaving in that way, so that when he's calm, you can talk to him and be like, have you noticed that when every time this thing happens, you end up beating me? You know, maybe you should deal with that trigger because there's something that leads to the violence. And until you address that thing that leads to the violence, and why is it that it happens to women? Because, I mean, personal relationships, uh, the person closest to me is my partner. Uh, and when I'm frustrated, the things that I hate are the things that she does that have always annoyed me, but because of my state now is heightened. I don't beat my woman, I never have, and I fought with my sister, but you know, I was a child then, uh, and she was bigger at the time. <laughs> Is that gender-based violence? I mean, no, not I think in the context that it's being referred to, because we're addressing a specific uh, phenomena in society, right, of grown men hitting grown women. Uh, I so could, it's have the adults I could, I could have the conversation about children as well, because it's also violence, right? It's the exact same act. What gives you the right to hit a child? Do they not have autonomy like a woman? 
It's the same as hitting another man. So it's assault actually is what we're talking about and the root being violence once again. So human based. Yes, human based is more accurate. That would resolve all of the violence issues. But we're speaking specifically about the plight of women, which is very real and needs to be acknowledged. So let's not run away from that either. Right. But in order to have an intelligent conversation, let's speak about the phenomena. If you're going to talk about gender-based violence, then bring it to something real. You know, my dad was an aggressive and a violent man. Uh, but that was just the case generally. It'd kick anybody's ass, you know? So the fact that it happened at home as well is no big surprise because that's the man. The man grew up. The man stopped being violent. The man sought other means. The same as Umandela, who was a womanizer and used to beat his woman as well and became the father of a nation. You know, people have the opportunity to grow, and generally they do over time. Uh, I feel like we're growing up now and we're realizing what our parents have always gone through and that's why they look at us like we're retarded when we're making a big deal of it because uh, but we're saying no, it's not acceptable and they're like, okay, shut up, so then lead the way and that's the thing, realizing that yes, there is this progression where men are violent, it happens generally around this age to this age uh, and now it's happening even more so because of what we're doing to young boys by calling them trash even they don't know what the hell the conversation is about. Which is also not useful because you're once again not taking us anywhere. Yep. So for the conversation to be intelligible, you've got to say that there is a spectrum. On the spectrum, there is violence. The particular violence is men against women. It happens, poverty generally accelerates. High wealth comes with narcissism. So you can package it in ways that are intelligent. There's actual data for this. That would be a useful conversation. Our emotions on what's happening on social media, talking as if we're on social media is not useful. So let's talk about the practicalities of it. What are the triggers to this violence? Because there's a commonality in that, because our trauma is common. Okay, with that, the second question is, what causes GDV? Hmm. What causes GDV? I think going back to what Cameron just touched on is, you know, there's trauma involved in it. And he spoke about um, the spectrum of, of a boy child growing up. You know, there's a certain aggression that, that, that men go through. So there's certain traumas that, and certain norms that we've raised our sons or we continue to raise our sons on. But also it's not just a one-sided thing. Um, but I think for the most part, it's a traumatic experience one has received and the way they were raised that kind of allows for, for, for gender-based violence to continue. I'll give an example. Um, I know someone in my family who, my mom, you know, used to say that, you know, they used to watch her get beaten up and she'd run from her home because the family home was close by. She'd run from her home. Her family would ask her what's wrong and she said, no, um, I walked into a wall. Do you understand? So for her, when something like that happened to her child, her, it, 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 for, her, for the child, it's like, oh, mom, I'm going through this. The mother's like, nah, I've also been there. So we allow our traumatic past to continue into the generations that we, we are bringing into. But it also goes back to what I'd said previously that, and what Cameron touched on as well, is that we are starting to be the new template. We're starting to, you know, form new ideas and learn and unlearn and become these new people, evolved people. And we're starting to see, okay, this particular behavior is not correct. So now how are we going to start correcting it? And it's one thing to now go and fight someone once they've done the deed. We need to start looking at the, at the basis, at the foundation of it. It's the way we raise our children. It's the way we speak to our children. It's the way we, for, we formulate how they think towards, towards certain situations that will stop with such things. And that's, that's when the trauma comes in. When we start in, uh, influencing our traumatic experiences or our trauma to, on our children, they become better. And we have the conversations that-, that, that I wanna you. ask you something. How, how then do women bring back the men into their lives so that when you bring up a child, you bring up a child from a mother's point of view and a father's point of view so that we get rid of this uh, gender-based violence. But bring them how in what sense? Bring them back in what sense? 
how, how do you... Someone who used to abuse you or yeah. someone who's left you with a child. Yeah. Didn't abuse you, but they've left you with the child. Yeah, since we're talking about, about gender-based violence, how do you bring back this man that has been abusing you into your life? So in that sense. For the sake of the child. No, yeah. in any sense, I think. Listen, one of the truth... The, the the truth is there a reconciliation? Is it the truth of the matter is, the conversations we're having in society right now is that we need to shun the man who has committed this violent act, right? That's the normal thinking of it that... Yes, he must if, go to jail, if, he must if, be killed. If Pan has hit me, right, he needs to be shunned away, he needs to be taken to jail, that's that. What we need to also realize is that we talk about rehabil uh, re rehabilitating men and rehabilitating our nation. If someone has done that, we need, to we need to help them come to the realization that, listen, this is not right. We can't shun that because at the end of the day, we're never going to raise a nation that understands and starts to realize that there are certain things that need to change. We, uh, we as a society, men and women alike, we can't just shun these perpetrators. We need to come to the realization that in order for us to become better, we need to understand, we need to help them become better people. And it's our responsibility. We can't put it to the justice, justice system or whatever system. We need to have conversations. I mean, we have the, we have organizations that deal with such situations, but then we've left it at them alone. We've left it to justice systems to do that. And the truth of the matter is, a man who goes into prison, a lot of the time, it's not going to be reformed. As much as they call it correctional services, there's no correct behavior, there's no behavior that's been corrected in those areas. So now you're leaving him out into the wild, and once he comes out, he's not coming back into society. We need to find spaces, we need to have conversation that says, you need to recognize the fact that you harmed me, that your behavior is wrong. Now we need to find steps to correct that behavior because truth of the matter is shunning that person and shunning that behavior doesn't, you know, it's not gonna be effective either. I wanna start here. Um, in terms of the stats, uh, about 20,000 South Africans get killed every year. Of the 20,000, 16,000 of them are men. Only about 2,000 are actually women. So I have an issue with the fact that people never want to speak about those stats. 16,000 men versus 2,000 women. And if we look at the combined 20,000 and assume individual cases, there's 29 million men in South Africa. That number accounts or equates to 0,06% of men in South Africa. There's 50,000 cases of sexual abuse. If we multiply by 10 saying women don't uh, speak, speak out to 500,000, it's 2% of men. Yet every man is, is demonized is my first issue. The second thing I wanna say is looking at the violence and the fact that uh, men are killing men and men are beating men more than women. The question is what causes violence? Firstly, I don't have a problem with violence as a concept. I have a problem with bad violence inflicted on an innocent person. What that means is Cameron made the example of taking out your frustrations on a woman, which I'd argue is a weaker person. Xenophobia, homophobia, we never attack strong, bigger guys with more resources. It's always the weaker person. So I'd argue that we always take our frustrations out on weak people. And to what you're saying, we need to go back and figure out what are these issues people have that are frustrating them. It could be poverty, it could be Black people now took my job to what you were saying about white men being angry. How do we resolve that or how do we teach men that, look, go be violent. Go punch a bag, go play rugby and tackle the mood into other O's. But take it out in terms of in a positive way. Because violence is necessary. Wars, if you are violated, you call a police officer to come and inflict violence on a perpetrator. And we're not going to have cops if we demonize violence as a whole. But we need to look at the stats. And the stats are saying men are more under attack than women. Number two, about a thousand kids get killed every year, and most of those kids are killed by mothers. Again, it's not gender-based, it's not age-based. It's an angry, frustrated person that's taking it out on a weaker person that happens to be in their vicinity. My question was, are men really wanting, able to deal with things? I, 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 I really, really ask in from a genuine place because we sure. always have this conversation but no we're gonna have this this and that let's not shun them down i think the society is tired 
Abantu buy afa either way. Sure. So people is like, we're gonna talk about it. it. We were talking about how this woman was shot at a police station. Sure. L like we in that in the, that's where we are now, mm. as a, as a country or sure. as a nation. A man really, when you sit with each other, do you want to do the self work? Do you want to deal with your triggers? Because na ngoko tata na men are being killed by other men and they kill women. So. Sure. In my year to my daughter, up mm. No, no. Also, to add to no, the I'm just, question, when we're dealing with gender based, I'm just yeah. talking about gender based violence. Men are generally more violent, it's a fact. Yes, sure. yes. So now I'm asking then, you're saying that violence is a healthy thing to have. Mm. So now it's. It can a, be. Sorry. Yeah, it can be. Sure. So I guess we, we're trying to have men who, who have healthy violence. Outlets. Outlets. Is what you're asking. Can men deal with it? Yeah. My, my father used to beat my mother. And one of the conversations I had with him when I was older was understanding where beating women came from. Sure. And a part of it is like children. This is my wife. I have to discipline her. I can't keep shouting about the same thing. She comes home drunk every Friday. At some point, I need to take her to the next level. That's how they were raised. And the woman tended to be younger. So there was almost like an older man. And mm. to them, it was discipline. Never in African culture was it ever fine to abuse a woman. Sure. Only to discipline. Sure. To a point where her family can come in and say, Aibo, but you can't discipline like this kind of situation. Sure. Uh -huh. With democracy, with women empowerment, etc., no one sat men down and said, listen, if your woman is doing things wrong, this is the alternative. Uh -huh. No one said to women, listen, now that you're empowered, it doesn't mean carry on disrespecting your man. And because of that, men got frustrated. The wife is cheating. She comes home late at night. So he ends up exploding. We need the outlets. And to what you're saying, we're not discussing as men when we sit together. We're not discussing the outlets. Because go for a jog, go run, go do boxing, and go get that thing out. We are looking at a community of South Africans, black South Africans. I'll, I'll always go for black South Africans. It's fine. Yeah. deal. So, um, what now you're saying is that now we're fun with the same pants. We're dealing with so much as a country. Of things are moving. Things are things are evolving. Yes. Now we must stop and say, okay, now this is how you discipline your wife now, because we've moved. Yes. Is is is, is we women? Uh, no, as a a man. I don't know. As as a, I don't know who must do this. I think this is this needs to be very much a, a, a collective effort. Um, uh -huh. I think you were first, ne? Let me let you go. I'll follow. I'm. I'm always going to come back to the fact that we're not going to have a productive conversation unless we know what the outcome is we're looking for. So when it comes to gender-based violence specifically. The question that I have is, if not this, then what? What does our everyday look like? You know. Uh, so to go back to Penel talking about discipline, that's us still trying to deal with gender-based violence from a historic perspective where women didn't have the freedoms, where they didn't have agency. Uh, we're talking about an Africa now that has equality, not just for women, but for children, for the elderly, uh, for the white people in Africa as well as a minority, having a minority share of assets and everything else, which has to be an inevitability uh, if this continent is ever going to be anything African. Uh, so <clears throat> for me, it's you've got to move from a departure point of that final product that you're personally looking for. And in all of the coaching sessions I've ever done, the biggest hurdle I have to overcome first is getting you to exist in a future space without the limitations of your present mind. So if you want to rehabilitate the man, you can't look at it from a perspective of the man right now. Forget the man right now. Talk about the future African man. What does he look like? What does he do with his day to day? What does he do when he drinks? Does he drink? You know, what does he do with drugs? You know, is he married monogamously? Or are we going back to polyamory, which would be more progressive? You know, so for me, it's, Let's, let's focus on that ideal state we're looking for. What happens when he's angry? That's another question. So how do you deal with your age in that future state? Because it's an inevitability. We know that life is going to happen. There is going to be some white guy who's going to say something inappropriate, either to you, your wife, or your child. And you're going to have to deal with that. And the question, once again, there becomes, 
What are we looking to achieve? We want to perpetuate peace, right? So take your anger, shout if you had to. I shout, personally. I express myself that my girlfriend gets scared. I'm like, no, don't be scared. Have I ever hit you? No, I haven't. But I've got to express myself authentically so that you believe me when I tell you that this thing upsets me. That's violence. Sure. And then we can talk about intimidation. But now, once again, that's moving from a present day trauma where when a man expresses himself the way he actually fucking feels, scares me. now women get scared. Mm -hmm. Right? And I understand the trauma that and that comes from. men get scared as well? I think if we can focus on that ideal African man and, work backwards. and that ideal African woman, because once again, there's that thing where I see myself in you, the way you look at me makes me feel a certain way about me. And there's that continuous thing. You know, I say something, I see how you get defeated and eventually I stop talking about this thing because I can see it's not penetrating. But when you're moving from that future perspective and you're like, okay, how must the man be in that future state? And then the woman must be like, okay, in order for me to make that a reality, who do I need to be? Yeah, yeah. Because it can't, the work can't happen on one side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the trauma lays on both sides and it's the perpetuation by that pendulum swinging. Yeah, I just want to say something. Do black men want to deal with their trauma? Mm. Can black men answer that? Yes, we do. I, do. I can answer it. I have already. Can you answer it? Hmm? Can you answer it? Yeah. yeah and guys, be honest. I mean, so, so, yeah, please. But wait, and, and I, I, why I repeat the whole thing of being honest is that some black men really don't want to deal with it. Like, I know when I have to deal with it. So for me, it's, it's almost like I'm at a stage where when, I, when I'm going to get married and have, a, and have a child, one of the barriers that I've put is to say that I need to deal with my shit. So, so I, need to, I need to sit down with my dad. And who else? In the future. <laughs> yeah, so in the future. So, Not now. So, and, yes, and, and that, uh, then this is me being fully honest. honest. Sure. And I don't want all of us to pretend as if we've done it. So for me, for now, I'm still scared to do it. Sure. But I've put a, a, a timeline to say, I can't have this child without dealing with that guy. Sure. Because I'm going to find myself in a situation where this child has done absolutely nothing and I'm frustrated for no reason. So, so I think the black men have to be fully honest so. because black women are really tired of us. It's, it's a fact. Honest, honest about what? About do we want to deal with it or we are what? Wait, you what? With, the, with the trauma that we've been through that causes GBV. But I gave you the stats. Black men are not beating women. They're not killing women. It's wait, wait. That. Okay, fair. At the, hardy, hardy. Yes, but, but at the end of it, there is a woman who can say, or a family member that can say that black man killed this black lady. Sure. So whether the stats agree with it or not, at the point of, at, the, at, the, at the core of it is that there are black women who are killed by black But we men. can't carry that pain if we didn't do it. That's part of the problem with HIV. I think we're going to speak on a collective of, of black men. But when I pen, we're not, not going to change the trauma if we're saying, I didn't traumatize anyone. And you're saying, don't you guys want to change? Change what? No, but I didn't no, beat anyone, look, I didn't kill anyone. Yeah, that's fine, you didn't do it. However, as a collective, as men, as men, that's you literally saying that us sitting here right now, someone comes and slaps Kwaita, you didn't tell Kwaita to cheat on him, you wanna sit there. I'm saying you're not traumatized. You don't I, have to fix anything. No, Maybe defend her, but you're not broken. But I'm the fixed, guy is broken. But by, by me defending with Kwaita and then sitting him down, and look, I won't fix him there and then in that moment, but I need to, as a man, make him aware that are you gonna look at Kwaita? You understand? And outside this space, like you were saying, so as guys, you know, women have asked that many times, do guys actually sit and talk or do you guys ever, only ever talk about soccer? Wah, 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 wah. Mm. We actually do have these conversations. Good men talk all the you time, know what? but it's We actually do have these conversations. <laughs> and sometimes the guys who, I mean, sometimes it does come as a shock where I'm like, hey man, really? You know, because it's not that, Obviously, these guys exhibit like, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I hate women. Do you understand? Shy, sure. You know what we I mean? But my point of departure initially, what I said was, I think this is a perfect opportunity for us to set a new societal norm and societal contract. And it comes through educating and saying, okay, guys, this is how we protect women. This is how you, you don't hit a woman for X, Y, Z. If she does this, yeah. There's so many different places that, you know, different scenarios rather that can be the outcome. However, the important thing is to actually sit and start the conversation to say, gents, we are fucking up. Teammates to these guys are making us look weak. How do we come together and do this? Sharp, we need to create more outlets where men can vent their anger. That's great. That's you. That's, no, hear me out, let me finish, then you guys can point it in. This is my point of view. Sure, sure, I'm sure, saying, which is, us as guys, we can't sit on the side and be like, yeah, but it, but it wasn't me. Yes, it wasn't you, but you can't sit and be like, well, 
are you only going to act when it's someone close to your circle? That's nonsense. Because that's, that's not the world we live in, guys. Amen. Me personally, let me just finish. Me yeah. personally, like I said, the world I want to live in, the space I want to live in, because of my kids, I wanted to reflect what I ideally I wanted to be. And if I don't do anything in that space to try and curb this, sure. how, how am I going to expect my son or my daughter? They, I'm not always going to be with them, guys. We can't preserve childhood innocence forever. Sure. And this stems from kids growing up and believing that this is the norm. And like you were saying with the triangle, it just becomes a cycle that doesn't end. But it starts with us putting our foot down and calling the bad guys out and saying, I've been in two groups of fathers, good fathers. Every time a guy says something that's adverse, I don't change nappies. No, men don't really have to be there. Good men demonize those gents and those guys walk away. Good guys judge other guys that are adverse and you guys end up A guy's gonna be like, hey, fuck this nigga and leave. We're not trying to understand men from their perspective, which is why I'm, I'm saying things like, violence is not always bad. And you need to speak to a guy and say, you hit your woman, why? No, I bet Delel. Okay, let's speak. So you want to discipline her? That's sure. What, that's what I'm saying. Sure, but don't demonize him. Don't say Antoine Lento is fucked up. Because the no, guy's just going to switch off. It is fucked up. To you. And, and that's why I'm. But not to me, but I'm Shaila. I'm Shaila. I'm Shaila. That's exactly why bad men walk away and uh, you guys will never even. fix them. I'm not going to let him walk that's away. I'm saying sit do down. Thank you. They won't listen to you. No, I don't. But my brother, we that's, that's, that's how we. Because it, it comes back to that. It's also an act of violence. Spanking. Spanking is an act of violence. It was Adnot three years ago in South Africa. So spanking a woman was a, a, a crime. Hitting a child is illegal. No, no, no. Hitting a child. no, no. no. woman no. spanking. Oh, sorry. Coitus. Coitus. No. <laughs> so, I would draw. I would draw. <laughs> so for me, the, the reason why sex is I'm, violent. It is. And and this is this no, is, guys, guys, this is, can you please not straight? Sorry, sorry, can you please not straight? We are talking about like I'm not talking. Iman. Guys, hitting a woman, Iman. killing a woman. We're talking about that's serious stuff. I'm talking about the spectrum. I'm talking about the spectrum of violence. There mm. is an existing spectrum of violence, mm -hmm. right? There is an existing spectrum of violence between men and women, mm -hmm. right? You will find women who have no problem with man having a stern hand. Sure. So be careful when we're speaking across the board because you're going to be wrong somewhere. I guarantee you that the world is too big. Mm. Can we speak extremities, guys? Because right wait, now, that's wait, where we're at. Man. Uh, no, we're still we're talking the about the women are dying. Like, so are. Okay, okay, I'm done. So are. What, what, the question I heard Twaita asking was, do men know how to? Huh. And the answer for that is no, for most. Those who have an issue, which are a minority, again, to contextualize. Most of us are fine, actually. Most of us don't no, beat no, our women. What? Say again? Do men know how to? Do men know how to rectify behavior? Do they know that they have to a problem? To make the change. They first have to recognize that they have a problem. Sure. sure. So the, there's also different degrees. You get people who do it intentionally, right? Of course. I'm doing this purposefully because I know the impact that it has. Now that's proper violence, mm. right? That's, that's intent. Talking about a guy who's got no control over his emotions, umdan. You've got to treat him like umdan. Umshale pants with the sendan. It's all pelela blendu yenzai. We are capella pof. Umba, I finally get anger. You're not making a judgment call. You're making an inquiry as to what is the thinking behind this behavior, because there's always a thinking behind it. One ma police are shy everybody. Okay, so uma uta to shy uma ma. It's called we nuga shy. So when a person has some form of authority, you can beat the person under you to bring them into line. Now you wanna demonize somebody who's seen nothing but that. Ah, come on. And they see as weak. Where's intelligence? Ah, come on. And they see you as weak. Guys, we're not demonizing. Yeah, 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 guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. so just because you went through that boohoo, sharp, your, your your circumstances were, were rough. We get it. But it does not give you the right. Do you understand? No, we we bring does. someone into that space and educate them. Just 100%. because you went through a tough time, guys, that people go, who go through good times and they still do nyons. So let's not give these guys excuses for why they do this. Yeah, because, but no. This is why white, this is why white people don't listen to black pain, by the way. What you're doing now but, is why, I, no, 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 as long as, and Utreva Noah speaks about contact, that racism struggles to, to hold up within contact. We never take ourselves out of ourselves to put ourselves into a minority white. We came here and tried to make a life out of ourselves. As long as we're angry, 
As long as we're like, you're wrong, you don't have a right. I promise you, the way these guys' minds think, because I counsel violent men on a regular, they won't listen to you. You have to try to change them from their perspective. To what Cameron was saying, I was speaking to my cousin last week for beating his, his woman, and I said, listen, the people in the community, but one day, so next time, it's wrong, it's right, you shouldn't do it. I'm explaining the outcome of what's going to happen to you for, for it to make sense to you. Which is, understand from your perspective, because as long as we're saying you're wrong, you're wrong, and this is why I, I started by saying, I've been in two fatherhood groups of good fathers. But the father says something like, I don't believe in changing nappies, and the gents, yes, says, the way they jump at him. I'm like, this is bullshit. This is not a, a, a free, transparent space. This guy can't free, uh, speak freely. So then he leaves. <clears throat> so I just want to go back to your question. Eh? We men are dealing with a lot of things. So one of the things which I think are the reasons of uh, gender-based violence is because we men, sometimes we feel guilty. It's, with, it's within our right to be respected by women. You know, so we are expecting to you, we are expecting this from women. Sure. So, and then you, 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 you spoke about um, exercising, which is one of my ways of dealing with my personal issues. Uh, there was a time, I think last year, where I hit my sister simply because I felt disrespected by her, you know, and it has been a thing for quite some time. Of hitting her or disrespect? Of disrespect, okay. yeah, because it, it doesn't just yeah, happen. I need to, so this thing builds up. It's cut to my hand. So eventually, I popped up and I hit her, and it was a big issue. So me, now personally, I've learned to deal with myself through exercising, jogging, weights, and whatnot. You know, so it's it's one of the ways how I deal with my personal issues. Yes, men, yes, we men, we, 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 we need women to help us deal with our personal issues. You know, we can't be running to shrinks all the time. Every time, every time I have a... Shrinks are also, the shrinks I, are also I, white. Look, we, we're saying, we're saying, we're saying the same thing. Um, sorry, Musa, I mean, I'll talk to you. I'll talk I'll, 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 I'll to you. All right, um, I'm, I'm just trying to, to, to bring it back to, because I think um, our director is going to move on to the next um, question. Um, and we might not have circulated um, this one, um, where I think the initial question was, what are the causes of what you guys call um, gender-based um, <laughs> violence? What do, you, what do you guys call it? <laughs> You're right. Um, gender-based, I, I just have to give the disclaimer, sure. at least so that we, we can at least move. Sure. Um, and I, I, I liked what Cameron said, where he, he, he pointed out the future men. Because we're looking at cause, and perhaps in your pendulum there's cause, and there's the future. The cause is probably deeper, maybe in the negative, in terms of your, the timeline. Because when someone does the violence, the cause is it's probably, as you said, the trigger is already, I mean, 20 or 29. And on the 29th, that's when the fist comes out. But the cause there, measuring the cause there, is useless. And when you go to court, that's what they measure. That's what makes it even more useless. And then where they send you after that becomes even more useless. They send you in a cage. Mm -hmm. They raise uh, all these things. Yeah, they send you to a cage, which is more, and you, and you mentioned it, I, I think, in terms of they don't correct you. Mm. Um, because the cause, they just took the act. They didn't take the cause. And I, I think what, what's interesting, um, I don't know how much time we had and what's the next question, but almost to go throughout that whole circle or, or, or line, however you'd put it, in terms of the cause and the future men. And with the future men, um, I think what, what even Penn was, was trying to caution us against, I think, Lombo, was not every man has the same root. And you have the root, and probably your root is the best for you and everyone who's like you. And it's probably the best. Your, your, your root is probably not bad, but it's for you and everyone who is like you. But even as men, um, we are not some, every man is a template. This is how men are. Um, as I said, some men are, are violent, extremely violent, and us as a society have probably used them in wrong places. We have people who are extremely violent, but we don't send them, okay, go and be a soldier and go protect us against these sure. people that are coming to be violent against us. That man, as violent and as cruel as he is, he actually has a function within nature. But we have kept him from that function 
and so it's a it's a corrupt system. And you will debate, and you say no, it's wrong. And he wants to kill you now because he's just it's a, it's a lion. He wants to kill. You need to put him in an environment where it's productive for him to do whatever. Um, in the lightest sense, we're speaking about violence. In other sense, in terms of you wanna punch, you punch a punching bag, you do boxing. In, um, and, and that's probably the, the lightest sense of it. But I think in terms of, we really need to go in terms of that whole timeline, in terms of the cause, not the action, because we, we speak about the actions, and I think that's the sensationalism, the actions, and it's bottled up. And at this moment, this person stabbed this one 29 times. And yo, 29 times, how can you stab someone 29 times? But we don't go in terms of the cause. And I think also, what's the future of that person if he was diagnosed, cured, and if he was allowed to go his route, but in a more productive um, path. Okay, there are three women here. What are you guys hearing from these four black men? Women only. Answer this one. Or oh, five men, there's five men. You as individual women, what are you hearing from these five black men? Firstly, I hear that there's no problem with how things are um, in terms of our safety um, as women. Um, it's like, from everything I gathered, it's, it's as, it sounds as if we are over-exaggerating the violence as women because it comes to us. Though as if those violence were to be executed somewhere else, it would be an okay discussion. Yeah, that's how I, I, I gather everything, you know? And also um, it's putting me also in a very, in a space where then I'm questioning because he coming with stats saying that men are violent towards men. Then I'm like, then in like, up, you know, uh, maybe I've personalized EGPV and made it a slogan for women, you know. That is for me to also maybe check myself out. But at the moment, I'm, I'm feeling like the whole thing, because I, immediately when they say GBV, I think of women. So maybe that's my mistake to immediately think of women. I should also think of other people. Then now when we have this discussion, it's a thing of this violence is, is, violence is a thing, you know? Because now I'm even asking myself, Guti, so if, if as we are apparently ne neglecting the fact that men are killed more, are we normalizing men dying hmm. more than anything? And, and that's where I, I, I feel I am with the discussion. Go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> you, it was a lot because um, one thing I want us to, 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 to not do is counter, which I, I, I see you bringing up statistics, tends to do. I don't want us to counter what's happening to women, with, but men are also being killed. And that like Kwaita is bringing up is the fact that clearly the common denominator is men. It's not us women. So now what, what, what we need, what I'm taking away is that you're trying to almost counter what's happening to women with what happens to men because, because men have the biggest statistics of them being killed. It's, 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 it's now seen as no, it's just a phenomenon when it comes to women. And what we, are rea what, what we also need to realize is that um, if we are only speaking of 50,000 women coming and saying, Hore, listen, I'm being raped or I'm being violated, Imagine how many more are being kept quiet. And as men right now, what, what I'm hearing from you guys is that you're all pulling in different directions. Like, no, but men are not. Men are good, men are this. We're not taking away from that men are good. However, we need to address what is happening now. And Musa puts it correctly in the sense that the actual act in itself is a final step of what has been coming. And it goes back to what we're saying. And Quetta asked, are you willing to discuss 
your traumatic experiences. Some have said, yes, I've discussed it, but you're not, you're, and as much as you guys are not the perpetrators of the phenomena that is happening now, or you're the ones who have been able to, to be able to be men enough and say, listen, I come from a traumatic experience of my mother, my father beating up my mother, of society making it okay culturally. You have had the opportunity and have the, you're lucky enough to have the environment to allow that conversation. But unfortunately, that is not the society we're living in. So what I'm hearing from you guys, I understand that you're trying to defend the fact that men are good natured. Not every man is perpetuating what's happening. What we need to do now, what I feel that what needs to happen is that men, yes, unfortunately, you're the common denominator. Because when, even when it comes to the violence against men, it's men who are, who are doing this thing. When it comes to the women who are women being beaten up, women who've been killed, women who've been raped, men are the common denominator. And I'm not saying lump yourself with that nonsense. However, I'm saying, how are we going, how are you actually collectively? Because even women, I don't think we understand violent abuse and violence in ourselves because we perpetuate that notion in all the in some of the things that we do ourselves so as a collective what are we doing to address the traumas because even us as women are, are, are allowing our own traumas we can't act as if it's just men who have traumas us women have our own triggers and have our own traumas that also add on to this phenomena that is gender-based violence i feel so sad <laughs> I honestly feel sad because, okay, firstly, before I, I feel corrected, one, um, whenever I heard the term gender-based violence, I've always associated with black women. But the more that we're having this conversation, I realize I've never had gender-based violence or violence against a woman in my experience from a black man. I don't have that. My experience has been with white people. My violence of any sort coming from a man has been from a white man. My first exposure to violence from a man was me seeing a white man literally torturing his own family. Mm. It's good during the day, but when he comes home from the mine, Gabo three, the children start crying. That was my first exposure to um, um, domestic violence. And my second experience was me moving into a, a, a white old neighborhood, border house in a white old neighborhood. And my welcome, gift to the neighborhood was my white racist neighbor coming to tell me that I have no right to be there. Mm -hmm. I belong in Soweto. Mm -hmm. I should uh, move out and stop making a noise. Basically, I just don't. Be and he even questioned whether I have a title deed to this land or not. Mm -hmm. So that has been my experience. So my experience with violence has not been physical, but more verbal, mm -hmm. abusive, that, to that toxicity. So I am corrected in, this, in the sense of um, me associating gender-based violence with black women. Also, I'm realizing that I've associated it so much with black women because the way that social media and the news, everything that we are fed um, is, is, is geared towards black women. You know, So in order for me to understand what my black sisters have been going through, I've had to open up myself and actually understand everything they're saying without judging. And that's why I'm able to understand them a bit better. It's, it's a very sad... So I said society to live in now. Um, what I'm hearing is that women are collateral damage. The more you all spoke, that's all I heard, is that we women are collateral damage. Mm. Your traumas, we didn't cause them, but we will be your punching bag because mm. we are the outlet. We won't fight back as another man would fight back. If, um, if you're saying, if you, you quoted the statistics, Penuel, and you say men are, are dying more, because of other men, mm. because of how things are. I'm assuming that he died without, he died with good fight. He didn't just die, you know, because we associate them as strong. They will, the way they are towards women and how women have described the black men. I think he, he, he didn't die without a fight, you know? Um, it's, I, 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 I completely acknowledge that it is wrong to, to, to relate to it like that, but, it's the way society speaks about violence right now. 
Um, I believe that a way forward, and uh, going back to Cameron's point of view, Guti, what kind of a future men are we looking mm. at having as a society? Um, a lot of these issues stem from, they've been passed down to us. A lot of ideas have been passed down to us. Um, it's either you come from a, a, a home that's got traumatic experiences, or he's a stratin, or someone told you this is the right way, or a woman is, or wife is supposed to behave like this and do this, cook for a man. When he comes home, don't ask him where he comes from, just wash his hands and, you know, but um, there's, we have not normalized open conversations within the home. Mm -hmm. We come from homes where the father speaks and he's the voice of authority and that is that. We come in, we, we, we stem from a society where it, the woman, the matriarch of, of the home, must not be seen as someone authoritative in her home. Mm. Because if she's seen as someone authoritative in her home, it inst instantly makes the husband or the father figure in the home weak to society. So we live, we, live, we basically, however we move in this life, we are moving Instagram on the streets. Mm. We are living Instagram on the streets. So for me, it is very important. In order to reach a level or the kind of men and women that we want to see in the future, we have to encourage accountability amongst one another. Mm. Accountability is not encouraged. In, in, in the conversations that I've heard here, I haven't still heard men who are saying, I am accountable for my actions. I am accountable that I need to take matters into my own hands and find my own healing. I must not be told by social media to say, it's time for you to do the work within yourself so that you stop being a toxic contributor in this society. We can't have a different society if men and women are not willing to be accountable for their actions at this time. Whatever wrong that they are doing or whatever they are doing to inflict pain on another person, they need to stop and ask themselves why. Everything starts with a why. Until we, start, until we start asking ourselves why, we cannot have solutions moving forward. When you start asking your personal self, why am I reacting like this? Why am I angry? Why am I not bothered by this and other people are bothered by that? You can't even raise children in a new future if you are not dealing with yourself. Mm -hmm. Everything stems from self. The more we talk, I'm realizing that everything stems from self. When you raise, if you've got, I've got a son and a daughter. The age gap between the two is about two to three years. If my son harms my daughter and they are fighting about something, like I've gone to a point where I would get the same thing in exactly the same color for the both of them. So no one feels good, I'm more special than the other. Treat them the same way. If they are fighting or arguing about anything pertaining to anything that, that they have a common access to, I punish the both of them for that. Huh? Yes. I punish the both of them. So say, say for instance, say for instance, <laughs> say for instance, here's a simple example, like this morning. So bad, this morning, <laughs> they, they have cell phones. Ne? The sister wants to dominate because she's got a domineering type of personality. She wants to take her brother's phone for whatever reason, I don't know why. But she has her own phone. Ne? Then the brother became violent to the sister. Because she just, I don't know whether she wanted to see something, I, it doesn't matter to me. The fact that the, the situation escalated to a point where the boy felt like he has the right to harm the girl because she was not doing things or reacting to the situation in the manner that he wanted. Mm -hmm. For me to curb that issue of control, I took both the cell phones away, I kept them with me. And I had this conversation with them, I said, because you have been violent to your sister, I am taking the phone away from you. Because you couldn't respect your brother's space and his things, and you couldn't talk about it, I'm taking away your phone. Both of you go and think about what you have done. It is not okay. Now, that inspires both of them to be accountable to one another. He must be able to say, sister, you cannot do that because you know the, the results of what, you're going to, of, of what uh, the outcome would be of such a situation. I'm inspiring them to be accountable to one another. It is the same thing when we are inspiring men to be accountable with other men. I believe that it has to start in the home. Mm -hmm. You know? Inspire accountability in the home first. I am accountable for how I, I, I speak to my spouse. I'm accountable to how I speak to my spouse in front of my children. I'm accountable in understanding that I may cause damage to my spouse, if I want to keep him to a certain uh, uh, gender role specific type things in the home. 
Sure, he's not the guy who changes the, the, the light bulbs and, and blocks the drains. He's not that guy. But I need to work on myself to understand that it doesn't make him less of a man. It doesn't make him less of a father. If I am going to impose those views, and I can see personality-wise, they're not even working for him. His mind frame is not there. I myself am becoming violent to who he is. So I'm understanding violence more um, on the less physical side because I haven't experienced violence on a physical level, you know? So, but in essence, all of it, what I understood when the gents were talking is, until you deal with your traumas individually and you're honest about it, point blank, no excuses, women will always be a collateral damage. Can I just ask something? From what I'm hearing from the gents, the gents could tell me if I'm wrong. Hey, it's life. I'm hearing the gents saying that, look, those guys that are beating up women, why must it be my responsibility to solve them? Why are women imposing that good men must fight those bad guys? That's what I'm hearing for some of, from some of the chants. Just, I'm just contextualizing it, you know? Um, what? So, yeah, yeah? Yeah, um, just, just to, 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 to add on to that thought, um, it, 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 it gets a bit layered. Because on the, on the one side, and that's why it's very, and that's why honestly, it's very, very key. Even, even in what women want, they should be very, very honest. Um, uh, who come and um, mention that a woman who says, I want to be beat, those women should be up and say, we want to be because, so because there's this, and not because beating a woman is right. We, we started with the hair discussion. Easy. Easy. You have your hair and we went deep and we're able to go um, into there. And maybe because violence is a more emotive issue, obviously there'll be a bit, either a bit more restraint or a bit more sharp, uh, sharp endedness in terms of how we respond. But the woman should be, should be honest. The men should be honest. A, a woman who says men and women are equal cannot be the same woman who says, Musa, go beat up that violent hyena. Who beats up Uban, Papa Ekshinikas? Go beat him up. You see, Wambangi, we has weapons. You are a man. You have a penis. No, but no, everything else we equal. We're fighting for, for jobs. We're fighting. But in terms of this, you must go beat that person up. If you don't, you are saying you're taking no responsibility. You don't care about what's happening um, in terms of the world. I, 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 I've, I've, I've noted the tone that what, what women are hearing. And um, to be very, very honest, um, I'm not going to change it out of convenience. I am not going to say I killed a woman just so that I can stand, uh, come onto this platform and have a nice pointed thing that I've killed a woman, I've reformed. And I'm, I'm not going to act that. I don't have to adopt that. Hmm. I don't need to adopt that. And as, as, pain, as, as pained as you are, it, it might be a genuine pain that, okay, there's this pain, but these people are passionate about the solution. You can at least move, as you said, with, um, with, um, with your example there of accountability, that you forced your kids to work together. Um, that's the thing. You, you actually forced them to work together. Whatever you do, whether they're counting, you have forced them to work together, not look at you as the bad guy, even though they were doing whatever they were doing and for whatever reasons. But you forced them to work together to say, you know what, if you don't work together, you both are going to lose. And that's probably the kind of leadership, that's probably the kind of community we need to get to where whatever problem, whatever pain it is, the pain is legitimate. Women are being killed. The stat may say that they're not the ones who are being killed the most, but a woman who, whose sister was killed may say it's too much. And she's valid in her, it's too many. Two women killed in a castle could be too many for anyone. Losing your daughter could be, I, lose, I lost too many children. You may have 20, but you lost one, it may be too many. So on that, I empathize. And maybe I didn't, I didn't bring that up because I was still trying to find the which, and, and, and the questions are, are going forward, but we're still not going back to the cause. <clears throat> we're, trying to, uh, 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 we're trying to appropriate blame, and you're not gonna find any, in almost any discussion. Unless you go to jail, you get to the criminals, you sit down with the criminals and say, okay, let's, let's speak. And maybe then you'll be able to get the ah, this is why he does that. But that's exactly what I'm asking now. What is the reasons for that violence? Because once you get the reasons going into that violence, and this is violence that is out. We, we don't speak about other violence to justify violence. We speak about it to contextualize the violence. 
Because as soon as we can con contextualize and say, this one's right, this one's okay, this one's okay, this one's okay, this one is wrong. Imagine all the energies that we have going across to, I started by saying filth. I called men filth when I started. Um, and I said, I don't want to be associated with filth. And the actions that they do may be filth to me. And I don't defend that at all. So we all, when we're very, very honest, we all know what the filth is, what we shouldn't be doing. But we're not going to go anywhere close in terms, of this, in terms of any solutions if we're moving away from, as I said again, the cause of those people who do these kind of things. And then from there, we, we may be able to reflect and say, oh, crap, I also do that. But first, we should remove and say, this is what happens. This is the cause. Why do people do that? And then from there, people, like a magnet, men will be able to say that, nah, man. But I thought when I do this, oh, OK, this is the actual, and almost like a magnet go that way. I understand maybe we don't have the, 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 the value of time, and women are dying every day. But if we're, gonna, if, if, if we're not really going to get into what is the cause rather than the actions, the actions are, it is a crisis. I'm not going to argue that it is a crisis for certain women. Global, in terms of the whole world, if you are a non-animal, if you're just something looking outside the world, you'll be like, nah, it's fine. Most of the humans are alive. It's just a few of them. It's like, it's like no, I'm just saying that if you're not a human, if you're completely yeah, but would, out. Would you, would, you say that, uh, would you say that control could be a, a possible contributing factor to the cause? Control is then just now because... We, now we're speaking, a sense of control. Now, we, now we, 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 un, we, we, we're taking out of the bag. It's one of them. I can agree that control is one of them. Not for me, but for someone else, their sense of control may be the root of their violence. All right, guys. Yeah. Can the you go to the question? Yeah. And what I'm hearing here, men are saying, no. I, why must I go there to fight that guy? Can I, can no, I that's, that's not what we're saying. No, 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 no. That's exactly sure, 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 sure. I'm sure. giving that's him exactly the frame of reference exactly so that he can, he can uh, that's true. yeah, he can go, yeah. Uh, I think Iman is, is ready. Go for it, E. <laughs> <laughs> Can you go to Cameron after, please? So, so my, my point of departure was that we need to re-educate, right? And then I then had a tussle saying that, no, why must we... It's on us to go to them so that women don't need to send us to go there. I even asked Penobuti, if this guy comes in here, we're we just going to sit. You know what I mean? It, because for me, it, doesn't, it does not make sense. I don't care what your upbringing was or, what, or what, whatever. But now since we are saying, OK, let's go find the root cause, we need to sit those guys down. And you guys are like, no, you're shutting. We're not shutting him. We're sitting him down and saying, what do, how do we fix this? The little ones, we're teaching them, this is what you do. You don't do that. You do this. You know what I mean? So by saying that, no, hi, I'm not bad. Yeah, you're not bad. Good for you. Well done. But it's still not changing the fact that how do we change it? Let's come up with solutions, guys. The solution is, okay, bring these guys. The, the, part of the solution is us going there to those guys and saying, what happened? Yes, time is everything we have. It won't happen now, but it will happen eventually. We need to get to a point where the moment a guy just does something funny, what happened? Your, your prejudices aside, Joanna, uh -uh. no. Okay. Yeah, let's go to Cameron then. Pen? I'm, I'm going to go with women need to stop the hypocrisy. Uh, the expectation is ridiculous, actually, because I've been in situations where I have intervened and the people fighting are still together to this day. So when I intervene, it's not welcomed by the people going through it because Bonabaya is asked by the inside. And then when I stand back and I do nothing, they're trying to in the attention. So I'm the same way Penel is done with blacks. I'm done with women. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm done with women when it comes to GBV. Uh, and I'm going to be clear, those who are piping the biggest mouth uh, are the ones who most likely haven't gone through it. Because I know people who've gone through trauma. It's a difficult thing to talk about. It really is. Even in a safe space, it's a difficult thing to talk about. And maybe they hide behind the screen to put it out there, but that's not useful. And the people who perpetuate it, 
as far as I'm concerned, who have nothing to do with it, who haven't been in that situation where you're looking at somebody you love and they're bruised, and you're like, when's that? And they don't say shit because they can't explain it. It's so much deeper. So that's why I'm saying, let's just focus on those future people. So let's, let's focus on those future people because if you want to delve into the histories and the pasts and how they manifest in the present, you're going to run into problems because every single individual is different. And every single case is different. And they deal differently with it. So to come with a one blanket answer for everything, ah, stop it. But that's exactly stop what I'm saying. Though. You know, it's not a one blanket approach mm -hmm. because, yes, we're different in our upbringing and everything. And I'm saying just because you're different, it doesn't mean that we, it mustn't be had. I'm saying let's have it. But yes, we're looking at the future, but we need to have it to get there. We can't just osmos or, you know, just go there. That's well, what I'm, I'm saying. All I'm saying is... We're doing everything in our power. We're acting on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm not going to accept responsibility for shit you know nothing about. When you talk about your personal experience, take into account that it's your personal experience. Speak to your family members. Don't go chat and whap, whap, whap on social media. Speak to your police. If there's an issue there, fix it with your community. Social media is not going to help you shit. Jump off social media. It'll save your life. I want to start here. Um... The world is made up by generally uh, three people. There's bad people that are bad all the time. There's good people that are good all the time. And then there's good people that do bad things maybe once or for whatever and then get defined by that bad act. I slapped my wife for 40 years, after 40 years once, and I'm defined as an abuser, but I've done everything right. And we need to be able to distinguish between these acts because that's where we make the mistake of demonizing good people instead of the act and isolating it. The second thing I wanted to say was, um, as long as we're not, first of all, acknowledging that they are good men and good boys, and then empower these good boys to know how to do bad things. Emmanuel can flex as much as he wants here about intervening with a guy because he knows his abilities as a good guy to take on a bad guy. A lot of good guys and a lot of the good boys we're raising today, you guys are stripping that away from them which is why I'm talking about healthy violence. The police, the soldiers. If you watch all our superhero movies, all our superheroes, male and female, are violent, but against bad people, so it's fine. It's fine that Black Widow killed whoever, because it's a bad, but that's violence. So we need to teach good children, good men, how to do bad things when it is so needed. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to add is, I, I quoted stats, yes, and the first correction is, when I said 2% of men, I'd multiplied it by 10. Because if you look at the exact stats, 50,000 sexual cases, it's actually 0,19% of, of men. Um, the stats, as we all know, Ukompela uh, talks about stats and Ipikini, and it doesn't sometimes <laughs> reveal. Uh, stats obviously are whatever they are. One of the things, or some of the things that are not in stats, are the trauma that women inflict on children. Children don't open cases, so we don't know the stats of that. Men don't open cases for women hitting them. So we don't even know. Maybe more women are slapping men, but it's cool. You cheated. Pa! It doesn't get captured. Number three, women don't, uh, don't report cases where it's female on female violence. Hmm. The murder stats that I gave you guys are based on assumption because stats essay doesn't show the demographics of who killed men, who killed women. We just assume that it's all men, right? And then obviously some people assume that it's all black men. So yes, there are stats, but the main reason I want to highlight the stats is because, as you said, you've only known good men. If we want to be collectively accountable, say to your good men, look, there are women out there that are dangerous, even to your son when it comes to your daughter. There might be good men here, but learn how to punch, learn how to handle a gun, even your daughter as well, so that if anything happens and you guys encounter a hyena, you guys know what to do. And I'd like to think, uh, Nell said, we're not taking accountability. Umfoy to took accountability. He said he's done something wrong and he's working on it. And I made an example of saying, I spoke to my cousin who'd hit. Cameron said it as well. Mm. We intervene, guys, on a regular basis. No one is collecting those stats. Mm. We're not obviously reporting. And obviously, it's not going to be in the media. Ah, oh, today, five men gathered to intervene and speak to a man. No one. Mm. So as far as you guys are concerned, we're chilling, scratching our bums. But the only thing I wanted to highlight is, based on the stats, which may be misleading, most men are good. Most mothers are good, even though most like 
kids are killed by their mothers. But we're not saying demonize mothers, they're bad. Let's speak about mother trauma. No, we're saying, look, we understand bad things happen. And to Musa's point, if we're not focusing on the filth, good people, and this is why I hate the social media propaganda, good people end up fighting amongst each other over filth instead of isolating. Number one, isolate the filth. Number two, isolate filthy acts. We hear Iman slapped his wife. How, oh, Lumchita, we were chilling with him. And I'm like, he's still the same guy. He might, might have lost his control and he didn't go run that day. So we need to insist to him, Dwana, do better. Don't do this again. You're gonna go to jail. Or we might have to come in and clamp and beat you up ourselves. Let him know we are Siksabi, for example. We do those things, but no one cares. I think Kanye West, was, I was listening to Kanye West this morning. No one cares what black men have to say about anything. It doesn't bring funding for NGOs. It doesn't trend on social media. No one cares. As far as we're concerned, black men are horrible. Be careful. Always be scared. The fact that you have a good father and a good son and a good brother means fuck all. And I, I think we need to be careful of that. And we need to try as difficult as it is to focus on bad people and say there's a bad person. Guys, how can we resolve it? How can you guys help us resolve bad people? That's why I, I personally want to take accountability over what Cameron said, and we said, women are uh, hypocrites. I, there's parts of my life where I feel like I'm, I'm a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna be honest about that. I'm not trying to front, right? We do say men go fix other men. It's easy to say mm. until my own husband dies trying to do mm. that, you know? Then it's okay if I say it for other men. It's not okay when I say mm. it over my men. You know, he has so, a gun next door, like, and you're saying he must go there. <laughs> you see, so I'm like, so I understand fully. I would, and I understand your frustration with us, absolutely 100 percent, because there's times where we as women do move on a hypocritical basis. There's times we need to be, we need to own that as well. I forgot I think, one point. Sorry, it's very quick. Most good men are scared of bad men. You guys have to remember that. I know Iman said we must all be accountable, and I said it's because he knows what he's capable of. Most good men are just as scared. When there's a banging on the door, I'm with you there. <laughs> hey, baby, phone the cops. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just wanted to make that. Most good men are scared, petrified think, of bad men. You know, speaking back to what you were saying, Niles and Cameron, um, I wanted to say, Jorge, I don't think we, even us as women, fully understand and encapsulate what abuse is. And that's why we help in, in perpetuating what, what abuse is. Yeah? I'll take for example, um, if now Musa comes up to Kwaita, says Kwaita, I like you, I wanna go out with you. Kwaita wants to, but she keeps saying no. No, you know, but in a coy way. You know, as you know, growing up, you, you, you had this thing that a guy had to chase, chase after you, mm. had to run after you, you know? And then, okay, fine. Now eventually, oh, even when you, you, you eventually start dating, even when you get to the bedroom, it's, it's a coy no, but you want to, you know? And then you eventually Patrons. have, you know, you eventually Patrons. have sex. Now we are coming to a space where we are trying to understand what is sexual violence or a sexual act? What is acceptable? Us as women have this thing that a guy needs to chase me in order to achieve me. Sure. But now in this, in this, in this time of gender-based violence and in this time of understanding where do we have, where do we take responsibility? Us as women also need to start taking responsibility and saying, in certain ways that we act, we perpetuate this, 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 this abuse thing. We perpetuate the cycle of abuse. And I think, we like roles, but we don't understand the roles. Mm. We like the roles, but we don't understand the roles. <laughs> Somebody tweet that. <laughs> um, so because we, you know, you're a man must provide, there's this horrible notion that the man must one, two, three. Mm. There's this horrible notion that a woman one, two, three. What if, you, what if that role is not meant for you as Possible. a person? Yes. So now we have, what men should take accountability for, what women should take accountability for, what roles should be played, but no one understands the roles. Mm. And everybody wants to play a certain role that they don't understand. Mm. So we're having a problem. This, this, you know, that's why I'm saying that, and we, I think the woman was saying that, Nels was actually saying, Hore, even us as women need to start realizing where we were playing this, the role. Mm. 
We are now understanding having conversations with men that you are holding them accountable, perhaps not even to our standards, but you're playing a certain role. But also, as women, what have we been doing? Because also, like you're saying, statistically speaking, we are also giving our children traumatic experiences in the way we handle situations, in the way we're allowing men to mistreat us, in the way we are treating our children. There are a lot of people who say, yay, my mother mistreated me. Mm. Or the way my mother spoke to me has put a traumatic experience in my life. When someone shouts at me, not even because a man has done it, because my mother has done it. So us as women, what are we doing? Collectively, that's when we say, okay, how are we taking responsibility on either side of the spectrum on what we are actually trying to achieve for the future men and women. Stop slapping men and stop watching the bold and the beautiful and see Brook. Because <laughs> Brook slaps men left, right and center and then when a man hits back, it's, it's violence. But then it's, but that's what I'm saying though, is that as women we've allowed certain societal norms sure. or societal things, TV, social media environments to say, Muna habuto rotu you. That might not stand in my hole. Why? And not because I'm wondering if you're cheating. Could be your safety. Mm. They're hijackings, they're murderers. You could be drunk driving, mm. those kind of things. But now there's this thing out of There are different things that we need to start changing. And because of this role playing, the different roles we've assumed and not necessarily done for ourselves, we then playing in a, in a play that doesn't necessarily have a solution. Iman, can I ask a quick question? I don't want an answer. Uh, about holding accountable, there have been stories of mothers that have killed their kids. Flabber's girlfriend stabbed him 17 times or whatever. And it's just a question for you guys to think about. Are women holding each other accountable for stuff like that, considering that you guys expect us to do that for people we don't know? How do you mean? Sure, no, that's fine. Mm. Very valid question, that. Um, I don't want to digress from the initial point, because we seem to be pivoting to other things that are very much very relevant, right? Um, so I want to see if I can still hand, hold my train of thought. Pen, um, so <laughs> it's funny that you do mention, and rightfully so, when men do do these things, you know, it doesn't get as publicized, it doesn't sell, basically. And don't get me wrong, we don't want a pat on the back. We don't. For doing that. We actually don't. You know what I mean? We don't expect a pat on the back, actually. Because we know we need to do it. We need to intervene. You know what I mean? But now our efforts are countered by such a strong machine that is in perpetuating constantly, constantly just putting it in your face. This, this. Of course you're going to get riled up. It's not, it doesn't take away from the fact that we are doing our work and that it is happening. It is happening, right? It is happening. It's, it doesn't change the fact that it's happening, but we're also working on the other end. You understand? And now, like Pen was saying, call it a conspiracy theory. It's not a theory. We were living it. It's a fact. Black women can't stand black men and vice versa. You know what I mean? But it's so such small, subtle things. You guys are touching now on the dynamics of relationships. Less relationships are, are, are different. What goes in your house might not be the same in your house. You don't mind if I come back at 10, you want me home at 8. You know what I mean? So there's also, also that space that we need to navigate and make okay. The problem does come in the form of when we now take whatever nonsense is out there and we try to apply it into our homes, you know? And as much as a lot of people won't actually admit to the fact that they're easily swayed by whatever mm. is happening out there, mm. you know what I mean? But now going back to the fact that, okay, as guys we know, we do sit down, we do do X, Y, Z, and another conversation that is swept under the rug, and rightfully so, well, not rightfully so, it's done so intentionally and not as publicized because it will help fix this mess, and that's what you guys touched on. Women can be so hurtful, not just to men, but to kids and to you're the same, well. and, and to other women, and it's such a vicious cycle. So you are happy to say, yeah, you guys are trash, forgetting the fact that that man was raised by a woman who did X, Y, Z. That kid is so angry because he doesn't know who his father is. And not because the guy hit and left, it was because she just decided to make whatever decision she made, which she deemed good at the time. Is that and, she didn't reach, and she didn't even come back to say, you know what, That's blah, blah, I... blah, 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 you know what I mean? But there's X on either side that lead to this young man growing up and I won't say just because my dad wasn't around, that's why I hit you. It's a combination of a sure. lot of things. However, guys, we need to be, we need to accept and push these conversations as un 
popular as they may be, yeah, you'll be called certain things. It's fine. Look, I still believe this. Women and, are raising and that's where, and that's where we need to go. And that's where we need to go to have the conversations no matter how uncomfortable they are. And I think we'll get somewhere. Let's come with solutions. Women are the ones raising these violent boys, by the way.